For the newer Smasher, learning a technique is a very important process, but it can be very difficult to remember everything that you need to take in. With guides scattered across dozens of YouTube channels, it may be very difficult to find the tech that you need to learn and how to use it. An even bigger issue is finding out what techniques you even need to learn in the first place. With this video, we're going to solve both of those problems, going through every single technique that you need to learn for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. But before we go any further, what is the first advanced technique that you learned in Smash Ultimate? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. And for more in-depth character and tech guides, you can check out our Smash section on ProGuides.com. In addition to our informative tier list, you can access pro courses taught by top players such as MKLeo and Esam, and even get yourself a pro coach with our Play of Pros platform. You can also tune into our live courses that are taught at 12 p.m. Pacific time on our YouTube channel by people just like me. <laughs> hey, so be sure to check that out. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be notified of when we're live and when our new videos come out. All right, let's start the tech rundown of out of shield options. When you press the shield button, your shield will be active on frame one, which is as fast as possible. After this, you're locked into shield for 3 frames and could then release the shield button to drop your shield. Your shield will take 11 frames to drop before you could do almost anything though, so this could be pretty inconvenient. Fortunately, the game lets you perform a few actions directly from your shield. You can roll by pressing left or right, spot dodge by pressing down, grab by pressing the attack or grab button, jump, up smash, up special, throw an item, or parry. Parrying is the name for Smash Ultimate's perfect shield, and it works by releasing your shield right before an attack connects. Within the first 5 of those 11 frames of shield release, your character will parry any attack that enters the range of your full shield, and you'll then be able to block it with a lengthy hit lag animation and reduced shield stun. This makes it easier to punish things that hit your shield. You can also angle your shield by gently tilting the stick. This can be made easier by holding either an additional shield button or the special button while shielding to disable rolls and spot dodges. Shield angling is useful as the exposed parts of your character can still be hit while your shield is up, resulting in what's known as a shield poke or shield stab. Dash dancing. The technique that we call dash dancing in Smash Ultimate is really foxtrotting. You have two types of grounded running, Initial dash and full run. Initial dash is the beginning of a run, and doing multiple initial dashes without holding forward any longer is called fox trotting. You can do this in either direction to mix up your movement. Note that you can't shield immediately during your initial dash. When you're dashing, you have limited access to your grounded moves, but you could do an up smash or dash attack instantly. The instant dash attack will require a different input though, because holding forward and A will give you a forward smash. You can even press A during the first few frames of your initial dash to do what's known as a Kara smash, or dash cancelled forward smash. For an instant dash attack, hit the C stick forward immediately after starting your dash with the left stick. Once you transition from an initial dash to a full run, you can no longer turn around instantly, but you can gain access to some new options. You can perform any grounded option out of run by either releasing the left stick or pressing down right before the next action. Doing this with no action will also let you start running in the other direction without going into the skid animation. The skid animation, which occurs when holding back during a run, is often undesirable as it's laggy, but we can cancel this animation with a jump to perform what's known as a reverse aerial rush, or RAR. Doing this will allow you to jump with your back to your opponent, great for approaching with back airs. From initial dash or full run, you could perform a pivot grab at any time by pressing back and grab around the same time. This will give you a grab in the opposite direction that has slightly more range. You can of course also dash grab by grabbing normally out of initial dash or full run. There are some other neat grab techniques also. You can cancel a dash attack into a grab during the first few frames by pressing grab right after a dash attack. This doesn't do much for most characters, but it's excellent for Rosalina because Luma will still dash attack when Rosa grabs. A roll can also be cancelled into a grab. If you quickly input a forward roll right after starting an initial dash, you can then immediately input a grab to cancel the roll. This will give some characters a notable boost. Both this and the dash cancelled grab are often referred to as boost grabs. Doing a dash grab is slower and laggier than a standing grab, but it is usually necessary when the opponent isn't at point blank range. There's another technique that lets us access a standing grab, or any standing action, quickly out of initial dash. By flicking down on the C stick immediately after you start a dash, you will transition into a walk if you keep holding forward. Walking gives you a standing state, so you can perform a standing grab. This dash walk technique also lets some characters slide forward a little bit with their walk. When you jump from the ground, there are two possible jump heights. A short hop, which is a lower jump that recurs when you release the jump button within 3 frames of pressing it, and a full hop, which is a higher jump that occurs when a jump is held for any longer than a short hop. You can also perform a short hop by pressing two different jump buttons simultaneously, or by holding an attack input and jumping simultaneously. It's highly recommended that you learn how to short hop manually, however, as the other methods have inherent shortcomings. 
The automatic short hop attack, performed by holding jump and attack at the same time, makes another advanced technique possible. This technique is known as attack canceling. In order to get an auto short hop aerial, the game wants you to press jump and attack at the same time, but the developers didn't expect everyone to be able to press these buttons on the exact frame, so there's actually a window of 3 frames before and after pressing jump where you can input an attack. Because of this, you could start the first few frames of a ground attack and then cancel it into a short hop aerial by holding jump during the ground attack input. Doing so will cancel any aerial momentum that you have gotten from jumping out of dash and gives you the aerial matching your left stick direction. This can be useful for retreating aerials in the opposite direction of your dash. You can also use a similar technique to perform an instant reverse back air. During the beginning of an initial dash, hold back on a C stick while holding forward on the left stick, then immediately press jump. This will require C stick to be set to tilt, which is a good setting to use anyway, and having a shoulder button set to jump will come in handy too. You can do an instant reverse back air manually as well. Simply dash forward, then immediately hold back on the left stick and input jump quickly afterward. It's imperative that you're still holding back on the frame that you input jump. This will give you an instant reverse jump that you can use for any aerial you'd like. Once you're in the air, you can double jump by pressing jump again. Most characters have only one double jump, but some have more. Anytime after you've reached the apex of your jump, you can press down to fast fall, which will drop you downward faster than the force of gravity alone. Performing an aerial will cancel your fast fall, but you can fast fall again as soon as the frame after inputting your aerial. You can buffer a fast fall after C stick aerial by holding down on the left stick before inputting the aerial. Make sure you release down if you used it too fast before inputting the aerial. You can also manually buffer a fast fall after an aerial by holding down on the left stick and flicking the C stick in a direction besides down. This is useful if you miss your fast fall timing, especially for drag down combos. Landing during most of an aerial's attack animation will put you in landing lag, but most aerials have an auto cancel window before or after the hitbox is active. If you land during this window, you'll suffer the same minimal amount of lag as if you fast fell with no action. If you jump right above a character's head, you'll jump off them with what's known as a footstool jump. A footstool has varying heights and can be performed 5 times in a row without landing. A grounded footstool will put your opponent in a short period of lag, and in the air it will lightly spike them downwards with a short tumble animation. This tumble animation creates a tech chase on stage. What's a tech? Teching occurs by pressing the shield button as you collide with the stage or platform during tumble. Tumble is the animation your character goes into when you get hit by an attack with some power, and this could be acted out of with a jump air dodge, or attack when your hit stun ends. When teching the ground or a platform, you can hold left or right to roll. When teching a wall, you can hold up or jump to jump. If your opponent misses a tech on the ground, you could quickly hit them with a weak move such as most jabs to lock them, which gives you a short window to follow up with anything. Missing a wall tech will result in a stage spike, which may lead to a KO. Some characters can jump off of a wall without teching. If your character has a wall jump, simply hold away from a wall after drifting into the wall to wall jump. Some characters can do this instantly from the ledge by holding towards the wall and then away after releasing ledge. A few characters can even cling to a vertical wall by holding towards it too. Dealing with platforms requires a few more techniques. When standing on a platform, you can drop through it by pressing down. If you're holding down in the air, you'll drop through a platform rather than landing on it, unless you're in the middle of an animation. Use this to jump over platforms and swing aerials beneath them, sometimes referred to as ghosting. Directional air dodging downwards into a platform is known as wave landing. This will put you in some landing lag, so it's best used as a bait, especially with a diagonal direction so you can slide. Directional air dodging down and diagonally as soon as you leave the ground will let you slide forward or backward, which is called a wave dash. The lag from this technique makes it very impractical, but it can still bait your opponent similar to a wave land. Directional air dodging works by pressing shield in the air with a left stick direction. You can alternatively perform a neutral air dodge with no direction held to dodge with less lag at the cost of mobility. Many special moves can be reversed in unique ways. These don't apply to every special move, but if the control stick is aimed backward as or right before inputting a special move, you'll turn around with no change in momentum. This is known as a turnaround special or turnaround B. You can also do what's called a B reverse by aiming the left stick backwards right after pressing B for your special. This reverses both your perspective and your momentum. Putting both of these techniques together makes you do a wave bounce. First hold back right before as you press B for a turnaround, then flick the stick back forward after pressing B. This will reverse your momentum but maintain your original perspective. When you get hit, you can influence your launch speed and angle. Hold inward to survive horizontal kill moves, and hold outward to escape combos and survive vertical kill moves. This is DI or directional influence. You can also rotate your control stick back and forth around the direction during multi-hit attacks to adjust your position slightly with SDI, or smash directional influence. 
Last but not least, item techniques. Items can be caught with any tilt, aerial, air dodge, or by pressing grab with no direction held. Items can be thrown with the attack button or C-stick, with the tilt or smash input giving you different directional throw strings. You can also Z-drop an item by pressing grab with no directional input. This will gently drop the item and you can then immediately grab it with an aerial if desired. Phew, that's a lot of tech. If you'd like to learn more about any of these techniques, we have tons of dedicated videos for you right here on Pro Guide's YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you never miss another upload. <laughs> hey.